Thank you for holding, everybody. We're now joined with Don Lucas, the coordinator of fo football officials in the Sun Belt Conference. Uh, if you have a question for Don, please dial star one on your phone at this time. Don, while we're waiting for questions to get in the queue, would you mind starting us off with a opening statement? I'd be glad to, Travis. Thanks for allowing me to uh, come on today. Uh, I wanted to have the opportunity to uh, give the media an opportunity to talk about any rule changes that they uh, had questions about. Uh, it's probably on everyone's mind is targeting. And I want to start off by reminding everybody, targeting itself has not changed. That rule is the same as it's been for many, many years. It has not changed. The only thing that's changed is the uh, penalty for targeting, which is all of you know, a lot of publicity on it. The penalty is going to also include this year an automatic disqualification. So I think that's uh, something that everybody has gotten worried about from the standpoint that I think that uh, they feel like that, that the officials are going to be out there looking to call more targeting fouls, and that's certainly not the case. I think last year in Division 1A, with the 11 conferences we had last year, of course, you know, we only had 10 this year, but the 11 conferences that we had last year, there were only 99 targeting fouls, and I think we had seven in the Sun Belt. So it's not an epidemic, but it's a thing that is a very, very important issue to the Rules Committee because of the safety factor. We've had a lot of catastrophic injuries uh, throughout the years, and, you know, we want to make sure that we, that we have no more of those, if at all possible. Uh, other rule changes, uh, block has been tweaked again. Uh, hopefully we're going to get it right one of these days. We keep uh, working with and uh, make sure that uh, that we make that rule as safe as possible, also make it something that we can officiate and so the coaches can live with from a coaching standpoint. Uh, those are the two most important ones. Uh, one, one issue that I think uh, is going to be new, uh, for many, many years, we've had a player getting two unsportsmanlike conduct fouls in a game. It doesn't happen very often, but if they get two unsportsmanlike conduct fouls in a game, they have been disqualified for the remainder of that game. This We added a new section to that, and we've, we have a, a group of fouls that we're laboring as uh, unsportsmanlike fouls. These are all dead ball fouls. And this is that chicken fighting act you see after the play is over with where you might see two players start pushing and shoving each other in the helmet and things like that, uh, even though we've uh, warned them in several times. And we end up with two flags on the play. They all set. No, no yard is marked off. Uh, that would still be the situation this year as far as having uh, two flags on the play. If both of them were involved, uh, we would offset the penalties. But both of those players would then have uh, an unsporting personal foul that would count as one of two that would also count along with the unsportsmanlike conduct fouls. And if they were to get two in the game, then they would be disqualified. So that's something that we're trying to, to make sure that we cut out some of the post-play activity that leads to ill will and leads to uh, to more uh, unsportsmanlike conduct action later on in the game. Well, Don, thank you very much. Uh, we actually do not have any uh, questions in the queue. I think that's all we, all, all we have for you today, so we do appreciate your time. Okay, Pat. Thank you.